in reality, less and less people are using generic Android boxes. And there's a few reasons for this. One, there's been so many official streaming devices that have come on the market that are just way better at a way more affordable price. But on top of that, if you never saw Linus Tech Tips video where he breaks down how a lot of these actually contain malware, then you'll understand why less people are buying them because they're not exactly from the most trusted sources. However, the reality is there are millions of people out there with these Android TV boxes that don't necessarily have a branding to them. And that's why I like to create videos on them to at least show you how to get the most out of them and make sure you're doing it safely. Now, today we're going over the top settings I suggest changing for your Android TV box. And this is also a good chance for me to explain the settings to you so you can better understand which ones are best for your uses. Now, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button right down below and give this video a big thumbs up. Like always, for the first hour to two hours of this video, I'll be answering all of your questions and comments down below. Today's comment comes from Denny Height 6271 who said, off subject, but you know if you can use Wolf Launcher on your ONN TV box, absolutely, it's an Android TV device, which means you can install Wolf Launcher, which is an APK, and maybe I'll do a video on that uh, very shortly in the future. Let's get into this uh, little tutorial. Now I'm gonna try to be as detailed as possible in this review. Uh, I have put timestamps down below, so if there's a specific section you wanna to skip to, it might make it a little bit easier for you. Um, now, this is just one Android TV box. All the generic ones, they have a very similar interface depend depending on the Android version. I believe this one runs Android 11. So it's basically the same steps, just the screen might look a little different. So don't worry if yours looks a little different, you can still follow the same stuff. Now, the first thing I wanna talk about is My Files. Now, My Files is a way to reach the root of your device and files you've installed. And it's also a way to access your USB if you plug it in. So typically when you plug in a USB, you can access My Files and there's local disk, which is the current root device, the root storage on this device. And then there's usually gonna be a USB option. Now, this is a very quick way of installing APKs on your device because you can access your USB and you can install them right there. Um, it's a way quicker way uh, compared to installing like ES File Explorer or even going to install AppLink in some cases. So I just wanted to point out what File Browser does. It's just a way to access files and USB ports that you plug in, USB devices. So now let's head into settings. This is the first section we wanna talk about. And the first thing I wanna talk about is network and internet. because so this is one I often get a lot of questions on. Now, most people don't know that using Wi-Fi on these boxes can often lead to issues, not because your internet is bad, but because you don't have a strong connection. If we go to see all Wi-Fi here, you can see the ones at the bottom, not all the way shaded in. That means you're not getting your full internet potential and that's really going to mess with your buffering on your device. So if that happens, typically that means your router or your, uh, your, your main system is in your basement and that's typically messing with the connection on the upper floors. So strengthen that condition, either use an ethernet plugin, which can be accessed in the same spot. You just plug it in and it typically auto connects or just move your router closer or your device or get a Wi-Fi extender. Those are all basic solutions if you're having issues. Now at the top of your device, it almost always says set your device name. Now I do suggest doing this, this way you know which one belongs to which room. You can set a custom name or we can just set it as living room or family room. It's just a really easy thing to do. Um, otherwise that suggestion typically doesn't go away. Sometimes you can exit it like that, but just go and change the name. Now accounts and sign in, this is just where all of your accounts that you sign in while using your Android box will be displayed here. And even ones you haven't signed in yet. So if you're using Google and you wanna log into your Gmail, if you use Prime Video and you wanna log into your Prime Video, you can go directly here, but also as you log into other accounts, they will also pop up there, such as Netflix or what other device you use, maybe Zoom, stuff like that. So it's a neat organized way of logging in and out and seeing and keeping track of what you've been logged into. Now apps is where I get a lot of questions on. This is where all of your both apps that come pre-installed and ones that you install after like third-party APKs show up on. Now it's always gonna show your recently opened at the top here, like we just opened file browser, but you can also go on and see all apps. And this is gonna pull up all of your system apps, including all the third-party ones. Now there's a few things we can do once inside. So say we opened up file browser. Also, by the way, you can see how much space they are using up. So if there's some apps, such as you're not gonna use TikTok, it's using up 62 megabytes, delete it, right? This is a good chance to delete those apps as well. So if we click on file browser, here's all the options. We can open it up directly from here. 
we can force stop. Now force stop is basically going to fix any issues because it basically closes the app, like 100% closes it. Most apps stay running in the background, which can be an okay thing, but it can also mess with the overall use. So go ahead and force stop every once in a while. And that typically fixes most issues. Now storage used is going to talk about how much inter internal storage is used on the apps. Clear data. This is going to completely wipe the app. So it's like you installed it fresh for the first time. This can also fix a lot of issues if you have small problems while you're using your device. And then clear cache. Cache is temporary data. In some cases, it can actually keep the device running fast. But in others, I suggest clearing it every once in a while, especially when that data really builds up. And then permissions here, this is different things that the app might need to access. Some apps need to access your camera, such as Zoom. Some apps need to access the internet, right? So you can add and allow permissions based on what this app is able to do. This is file browser, so it needs to be able to access your files and media. You can also remove your permissions if you want, but for most cases, it's perfectly safe and fine. Now, if we scroll down in the app section, you also see apps permission, and this is where we can bulk allow apps to do different things. So if we click on microphone, all the apps that might be using your microphone pop up here and we can unallow them really easily. So it's an easy way to do that to multiple apps. Same with apps trying to access your location, your files and media, your contacts, your cameras, like the only one is APK pure. There's obviously no camera on my Android box, but if it had one, that would be the permission allowed at body sensors, calendars, etc. There's also special app access that does a, does a variety of things such as energy optimization, usage access, which allows an app to track uh, what other apps are you're using and how often, um, such as different settings, etc. Notification access, display over other apps that's pretty self-explanatory, modify system settings, and then picture in picture, which some Android versions and some apps do allow as well. Now, when we click on device preferences, this is the section that's going to have the majority of your settings that you need to change. The first part we can go into is the about section. And this is going to tell us all the information about our device. It's going to tell us the device name. We can factory reset it, which is a hard reset. It's like you just got the device for the first time. So if you're selling it, that's a way of taking all of your data off it. Status, which is going to give you serial numbers, etc. Legal information, model your Android TV version, which I was right, this one is 11, security patch, we got Android TV build, etc. And now what you just saw there is as I clicked Android TV OS build, you saw you are now a developer. So by clicking on that, that's a way of accessing developers mode, which we'll go into a little bit more depth coming up. Now date and time is pretty self explanatory, you can just automatically set your date and time and that's going to change it based on your internet connection and your current time zone. That's the easiest way to do it. Use your network provided time. If you're like my network always goes out, then you can just set the time and set the time zone yourself. And that way it will never change even if your internet goes out. Now, as for language inside here, we can obviously change what language is being used on the box. So you can change everything from Hindi all the way up to Portuguese, Romanian, uh, Slovi Slo Slovenian, I think, something like that. <laughs> Ukrainian, there's pretty much every language in here. Most people are going to use like English, Spanish, French, and Filipino. Um, I guess there's obviously others that people will use, but uh, for my subscribers, that's what most my subscribers would most likely use. Now, keyboard autofill is not really anything you have to change. If you prefer to use a different keyboard setup, so this is the virtual keyboard that pops up. You can change that. You can also manage your keyboards. So you can actually add other ones as well. However, I've never actually done that. And then there is autofill, which you can set it to your Google account. And that helps to autofill passwords, etc. cetera, um, when you're using certain things. That's obviously how we change it. And then the physical keyboard, which again, we can change up a bunch of different stuff, but uh, this isn't something I've ever played around in. And honestly, you don't really have to use it. I have a USB receiver mouse plugged in right now. Uh, and that's why this is popping up right here. Now, as for display and sound, there's a few things. We can change up our screen resolution. Auto switch is the best because it's going to automatically change based on your current monitor. There's display mode, which again, you can set it to the, the correct display, correct frequency for your device, um, but typically it will automatically change. And then color space settings, there's not a whole lot of options on that. Um, and HDR, that just adapts HDR on and off based on uh, what device, what service, etc. HDR just helps to improve color and picture quality when you're streaming different stuff. Now moving down to storage, storage has a few different things in it. It's going to tell you your memory info. 
So it's going to tell you exactly what is using up what space on your device. So you can see cache data that's built up from your apps. Your, you can see my apps are using up 450 megabytes. You can click on that and then it'll take you directly to apps where you can see which apps are using up the most space and maybe you want to delete them after a while. Now this device does have 32 gigabytes with a decent amount of storage um, and the device memory, I believe that's uh, talking about the RAM if I remember right. Now, as for screensavers, I don't really know a lot of people that would change this, but you can change it from like a clock, colors, and turn off screen. Um, and then when to start, right, you can change that. And then you can start the screensaver now. It's just not something a lot of people are going to play. Energy saver is just going to turn off your display after a certain amount of time. You can see it's set for 24 hours. I usually like to set mine to about an hour. That way, after your device turns off for a while, your display will automatically turn off, in essence, saving you some sort of power. Uh, and hopefully a little bit of cost and energy. Now, developer's option is that big one that I unlocked earlier. And this is one of the most interesting ones because this is really where you can customize your device and you can change a ton of things that typically you're not supposed to play with in settings. Now, the one thing I'll say is make sure you remember what you're changing inside the device because it may mess with certain things. Now, such as USB debugging, you need to use for certain installs on apps or to allow apps to do certain things. That one I suggest keeping off unless you really need to use it for a certain app, such as I believe Tech Doctor's, uh, one of his cleaner apps, you have to allow USB debugging. I also believe uh, is a Wolf Launcher to get it working properly, you need to have that accessed as well. Now there are other things in here, such as the ability to take away uh, animation scale. So this is the transition, for example, when we're closing and opening menus. You can see when this menu opens and closes right now, you can see when I changed animation duration. So look what happens when I turn it to 2X. You see how slow that is now when we have animation off so that's going to make scrolling through your device a little bit quicker because you take out all the nice little animations that some people like but i just think are useless now there's also a way to force uh speed and also uh gpu overdraw um, so there's a few different performance options as well i want to do a full video on this such as background process limit so this is how many apps can run in the background how many processes you can set it to four for example now that could overheat your device a little bit but it's something you can play around with i'm going to be doing uh you know a, a complete video on developers options and what these do but we'll leave that for a, a later time now really the last thing most people would be interested in is accessibility and this has a lot of different caption options so you can really customize uh your captions and what they look like so if we look on the bottom here you can see it's giving me examples of what the the text the caption is going to look like and we can fully customize the colors we can change the the text to very large we can change it to very small we can change the language and pretty much everything so it's a way to change up different captions while you're using them you can also put on high contrast captions which is going to add a little bit of extra oomph to your wording you you'll see when you use it and there is an accessibility shortcut as well. So just a few different small options you can change inside accessibility. Now, if we go to more settings, there is a few other things you can change up, but really nothing that's going to blow your mind. It's a lot of the same settings. So you can play around there if you want. Now that's really everything for today's video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you have a second, make sure you go and follow me on Instagram at UpgradeGuyOfficial. I have that link down below. I do pick up my puppy this week, so uh, she would really appreciate it. As well, if you're looking for a brand new VPN and you really want to stay protected while you're online, ExpressVPN is the best option. I have my discount link here. You get three months free, plus you can cancel it within 30 days and get all of your money back. It really is a great deal. So make sure you check that out. It does support me, so I greatly appreciate it. But that's everything for today, guys. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for always watching the content and sticking around to the end of the video. Hit that subscribe button before you leave, and I'll check you guys later.